Between the December release and this one, the Home Assistant team landed a final surprise on us, which was Chapter 5 of Year of the Voice. The most talked about thing was the ESP32 S3 Box 3, which can act as a local voice assistant and has a screen. If they continue to put effort into the voice assistant this year, which I'm sure they will, then I reckon that I will be able to fully or at least partly remove the Google assistants from my home. They also added the ability to add an item to a to-do list, ask for what the weather is like and a few of the bits as well. The most powerful addition is probably the ability to add voice assistants to areas, just like you can with Google, so that you don't have to tell it what room you're turning the light on in. In the coming months, I plan to dig into the voice assistant in more detail, so watch out for those videos. But in the meantime, let's take a look at the features for this release. As was hinted last month, the to-do list functionality now allows you to add due dates from the user interface. It also allows you to add a description against an item, which I think is nice for some additional notes. The integration such as Google Tasks and Todoist will also take advantage of these improvements where the integration supports it. And these additions in combination with the ability to add items using your voice, put it in a place where I think people will start using this more actively. Although it's in the blog post, I can't get adding a to-do item using your voice to work at the moment, but I'm sure that they'll get that fixed soon. I actually created a very simple to-do list for all of the steps that we needed to do to successfully cook our Christmas roast without missing anything. The next one is also an increment on some great card enhancements which were made last year. The thermostat card by default shows you a big number in the middle, which is the temperature that you set the heating to. However, some people expressed that it was more important for them to at a glance know what the actual temperature currently was and take action if necessary. So now there's an option to invert the target and current temperatures so that it shows the current temperature in the middle with the target temperature underneath instead. This works for cooling as well as for heating and also works for humidity sensors as well. Now onto a new card feature which allows you to include the fan modes into the thermostat or tile card. You just need to add the climate fan modes feature to one of these card types using a climate entity which has fan control. In the release notes it shows the fan modes as icons but I can't get them to show as this at the moment. I can only get them to show as drop downs at this point. By the main release, hopefully it will have the style option available like you have with HVAC mode so that you can select between drop downs or icons. If you display the status of Home Assistant add-ons using a tile card, you can now add action buttons to either skip or update the add-on directly from the button on the card. Previously, it would just show you the version you're on and you would have to click into the card to skip or perform the update. There is also a new entity type for this release called the valve entity. This allows you to control how much a valve is open for something like a water valve or a gas valve or your radiator valve. If you have the Shelly gas valve add-on, then this is supported with the new valve entity type. At time recording, this device appears to be unavailable though. If you have a DIY smart valve, then you can use this functionality by using an NQTT entity. You can set it to open, closed, or a percentage in between. I suspect that if you've got a gas leak, you're not going to want to only half close your valve. But cleverly, the entity dialog has an option to change it between a slider and an open or close button. It also apparently works with Google and Amazon Voice Assistants, so let me know in the comments if you plan to use this entity type, because it's an area of smart homes which feels quite immature still, but it will be interesting to see how many of you have started exploring smart valves. I guess radiator valves are probably the most common thing at this point. Now onto the automation editor, quite a few changes have been made here for this release. The first is to help new people to Home Assistant. If you don't have any automation set up, then you'll be greeted with some information on how the automations work and links to relevant documentation as well. I know I keep saying it, but I'm really impressed with how mature and professional the Home Assistant team and product has become. I hope that they keep finding the enthusiasm to improve in the product. After all, I believe that smart homes are still very much in their infancy. Now comparing a blank automation between the previous version and this one, you can see that triggers, conditions and actions have been renamed to make them more user friendly. IFTTT probably started this trend off many years ago with if this then that, and now most automation products do similar. You can also see a new add building block button next to the condition section, which separates out the items which aren't actually conditions. 
The and, or, and not building blocks determine whether all or some of the conditions need to be met in order to pass. Some actions have also been broken out in a similar way. A common one I use is the if-then action, which is actually an action that also allows a condition within it. And when you add a condition or action, you're now presented with a searchable list that you can then drill into to find the specific item you're looking for. It's probably going to take a bit of getting used to, but it's definitely an improvement and must have taken quite a while to develop and test it. Now that the year has started off with some attention to automations, I'm really hoping that this means that they will add categorizations to automation scenes and scripts, because trawling through a massive list of automations gets quite tricky, particularly when they haven't been named very well. I know many people have been waiting for this for years, so fingers crossed that it comes in 2024. That's most of the major changes for this release, and considering it was the festive period, I would say that they've done a decent release to get 2024 started. A few other changes to mention are that the recently added Picnic integration now supports the French version of the supermarket as well as the Dutch one. ESP Home now supports presets for fan entities. And the minimum number of samples used for the trend sensor, which isn't used very much, can now be configured. There are also a lot of new integrations for this release. Another new garage door integration this time called Tailwind a Dutch EV charger integration called Blue Current, and an integration with your Tesla car through a product called Tessie. This integration exposes a lot of interesting sensors. There are also five more integrations this month, which have been moved from YAML-based configurations to set up via the UI instead. There is a very short list of backward incompatible changes this month, but I think a few of them are worth a quick mention. If you trigger an automation to do something upon shutdown of Home Assistant, then check this change out. I don't think it's used by many people, but if you use it, then take a look. If you're a 3D printing enthusiast and have a Prusa 3D printer connected to Home Assistant, then check out this change as it's got some new statuses and requires a minimum firmware version. If you've got Rio Link security cameras and use the infrared lights on it in your automations, or probably more likely on your dashboards, then take note that the entity has changed from a light to a switch. And finally, Shelly devices now need to be on a minimum firmware version. This change is probably going to be a bit of a pain for me, as I've got quite a few Shelly devices, and most of them aren't connected to the internet because I've blocked them with the firewall rule, so I'm probably going to have to do updates to this locally instead. Well, that's it for this video. Drop a comment below with your thoughts on this release, subscribe if you haven't already, and thanks until next time.